member of the Athena Network in the UK from the very beginning. Um, I was one of the first members and I just had so much benefit from being a member. I had so much support from the community. It really helped me grow my business. Um, there was a lot of mentoring coming through the community from ladies who were more experienced in business. Um, so I just had so much benefit myself. I was really passionate about the network. Um, I actually arrived in Singapore. I was, I was eight months pregnant with my third son. So I wasn't planning to do anything, to be honest. I was just planning to have a baby and actually take a break. Um, but I, you know, I was looking for a community that I could become part of. And there are lots of amazing communities in Singapore, all different, you know, uh, catering to so many different types of women, so many different needs. Um, but I just couldn't find anything quite like the Athena Network. Now, when you say different, mm. you know, uh, what actually appealed to you to join Athena Network in the beginning? back in the UK because you were one of the founding members. I mean when the Athena Network launched in the UK it was actually a very, um, it was very early so there wasn't a lot of female networking and the networking um, group was founded by a lady who couldn't really fit into the traditional networking because she had kids and she was rushing and, and, and certainly networking tends to be very male dominated a lot of the time. Um, so she just wanted to create a network that was a little bit different and it was focused on women um, and to teach women how to network more effectively. And I thought that that was really important because we do so much networking, even if we don't realize it, if you actually think about it, we spend a lot of our day networking. Um, so if you're not actually learning how to strategically network and how to make sure that you're networking to reach whatever your goals are, um, then I think you know it's, it's a bit of a time waster, or it can be a time waster. And I also realized that there's a lot of ladies who don't actually understand just simple strategies to make networking a little bit easier. If you're a bit shy or you're a little bit uh, inexperienced, then there's just simple tools and skills that you can use to make that easier for you. So that, I think that is our key differentiator because we really help women network more effectively. Now, what is uh, Anitha uh, all about? Is there a, a representation behind the name Anitha? Why do you choose the name Anitha? Athena. Yeah. Athena. Um, well, it was actually um, a brand that was brought in um, in the UK after the network originally launched as a women's business network. And um, it's actually, um, Athena is the goddess of, of war and wisdom. Um, so I think, you know, it's a very strong brand um, that just says that as women, you know, we have to be willing to, uh, you know, drive our businesses to be strong, to be leaders, um, but also, you know, sort of use wisdom behind us and knowledge rather than um, the traditional sort of male uh, leadership. And as the speaker said today, talking about the Athena Doctrine, um, it's definitely the type of leadership that is seeming to be building a lot more traction as we move forward. So, uh, you know, Athena is the icon for female leadership, I think. And what will be your key strategies in building leadership skills uh, for the women here in Asia and even perhaps throughout the world? I think that um, leadership is some, it's not often a choice. I mean, I certainly never uh, woke up one day and decided that I wanted to be a leader. I think it was something that evolved quite naturally. Um, so I, you know, I started with a small group and I just wanted to make a difference. I just wanted to make a difference for a small group of people. Um, and it just so happened that um, the difference it made for them was significant enough for them to go out and uh, tell their friends and continue to. So I sort of became an, a leader by accident. Um, and I think leadership for me is more about stepping up um, and to the challenges, you know, and accepting that this is a role that I need to do, at least for now, um, just to get things started. Um, and, you know, I, I think that the true leadership is very much about accepting um, a role that's been given to you as opposed to actually going up and grasping a leadership role. And so now, right now today, after you have started a, a leader network here in Singapore uh, and in, in Asia, uh, has it uh, bear fruit beyond uh, your expectations? It's been incredible actually. It's been a, a really incredible journey. I mean, we literally started this um, almost two years ago now um, as a coffee morning. It was just supposed to be a you know, coffee morning for 10 to 15 women to just share and learn from each other. And um, the very first one, I mean, we only promoted it on Facebook. We had 150 ladies sign up. Um, and speakers come to us, uh, members, uh, you know, sharing, spreading the word. We don't really market the network, so it's all done through word of mouth through the members in the existing community. Um, I've been sort of put in the position of um, female leadership that I never expected, so I'm often asked to speak at universities or um, at young leadership events and profiled in magazines. I mean, I never asked for that. I never really wanted it, but um, I think that 
um, you know, it's all about the network, it's all about the community, and the members who have been part of it have got so much out of it in friendship, in, in um, professional development, in skill sharing, in so many ways. So I think that, you know, I couldn't hope for more, but I think we're just at the beginning. And so, what are the three key challenges that you see uh, ahead for the women? Um, well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if there's specific challenges for women or if they're just challenges for anyone who wants to step up into a leadership role. And it's most importantly, I think, as any kind of leader or any kind of entrepreneur, is to make sure that you own your niche, you understand where you're going to make a, an impact, where you want to make an impact, and how you want to change the world, even if it's in a small way. So I think if you focus on that um, and don't dilute what you want to do, um, I think that's a really important way of overcoming you know, the challenge of, of not finding the right target market, of not having direction. Um, I think also um, just making sure that you stay true to your values. So one of our values at Athena is to add value to our members and to make sure that they're getting a lot out of it and not to dilute um, the experience. And I think and we get approached a lot of the time by sponsors or advertisers and people who want to um, have commercial arrangements. I have to say no a lot of the time um, because I don't want to dilute the community aspect of what we do and commercialize it too much. So I think, you know, if anything, um, my best so my best strategies in my business is to stay true to the values and stay true to what I want to do and what my small change is. And what will be your vision and, uh, and, and, and the, your next steps uh, for the next five years for Anita? Um, any, any vision for Anita to expand? Yeah, I mean, I'm all about the vision. <laughs> um, I, I would love... My vision is to allow more women to become uh, business owners and entrepreneurs and start-up businesses. It doesn't matter whether they want to uh, start a small, flexible, sort of kitchen table business that gives them a flexible lifestyle and an opportunity to spend more time with their children. Uh, it doesn't matter if they want to take an online tech business to the millions. It doesn't matter if they just want to leave the corporate world and create a small, uh, profitable, sustainable consulting firm. Whatever their aspirations are, I just want to help uh, make that transition or that step easier for them. And, um, you know, I think that all women, regardless of their location, their geographic um, location, their educational background or their race, should have access to entrepreneurship. Um, so I'm going to do everything that I can to actually make that possible and make it a reality for as many women as I can. Now, according to statistics worldwide, uh, there are more women uh, in terms of population-wise uh, in ratio and than men. Uh, do you think that uh, women are going to pay, play a very important role in leadership in the near future, both in family as well as business, because the ratio has, has changed? Um, well, I think I, I don't think it's so much about numbers. I think it's really about the qualities of a leader that we're looking for now. And this is, um, you know, one of the really interesting things that we were discussing at the meeting today is all about feminine values and leadership. So that's not to say that a man shouldn't be leading or a woman should be leading. It's just saying that. Uh, there seems to be a cultural shift occurring where the values of transparency, authenticity, um, even vulnerability in leaders is becoming more important to people um, than sort of the traditional, um, what are seen as the male values, like the strength and the pride and the sort of the um, very uh, strategic focus on growth. You know, it's less aggressive and it's much more collaborative now. Um, so I think that. I definitely think that we're seeing a change in the way that leadership um, and leaders are perceived and I think that that will just open up more opportunities for women um, to step into roles that they may not have previously even wanted to step into. What will be your one key secret of your success today in leading this uh, active role um, in this wonderful movement, the, the Athena Network? I think most viewers like to know that. And the one thing that keeps me awake at night is to make, making sure that our members have a great experience. You know, all I want to do is create a platform where people can be themselves, people can achieve the goals, and they help each other. Um, but you know, from my personal point of view, the reason why I build communities is because I recognise that the most important thing that you can do as a person, as a business person, um, as an entrepreneur, is to surround yourself with people that want to lift you up. 
um, that want to help you, that want to help each other do more with themselves. And I think that everything that drives me is all about creating a platform to help other people do that. Just surround yourself with people that want to support you, that want to be positive, that want to encourage you. Um, stay away from the negativity and the people that tell you no and the people that tell you cannot. Um, you know, just um, surrounding yourself with great people is really the key to everything for me. How can our viewers uh, contact Athena Network for more information? Do you guys have a, a website or we a Facebook? Do, yeah, we have a Singapore based website which is www.theathenanetwork.com.sg. Uh, we also have a UK chapter which is very big. I mean, it's been very well established. We have over 2,500 members um, that meet at 150 different events a month. Um, and that's www.theathenanetwork.com. Um, and you can also um, find us on Facebook as well. Well, once again, uh, thank you, Gina, for joining us here at the National Prince Choice. And viewers, please do contact them on their Facebook, on your website, uh, the Athena Network, for more information. And once again, I'm Robin Steinberg. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much, Robin.